a warm greetings to all my viewers i am again here to examine browning's world famous dramatic monologue my last touches before analyzing the poem let's clarify the definition of dramatic monologue what is dramatic monologue it is a kind of comprehensive soliloquy in which one character expresses his thoughts in presence of other character who remains silent so it is called dramatic because the poet creates an imaginary character and let him pour out his own feelings and notions and it is called monologue because only one character speaks and no one else mono means one and log means discourse it is essentially a study of character of mental states and of moral crises made from the inside although this form originated in ancient greek tragedy yet it emerged as an independent complete poem in victorian age through the famous poet robert browning browning experiments different moods and various forms in his poetry he has a very deep insight into the minds of the character His dramatic monologues may be regarded sometimes as satires on the social paradoxes and sometimes as a subtle analysis in psychology of lovers. His my last touches is also an experiment in the field of amorous psychology. Of course, it is a queer combination of dramatic action and poetic flow. but analyzed critically it can be relished as an interesting reading with all the subtle values of browning's ideology now in order to appreciate this uh, monologue critically let's have a look on its theme it should be clarified to you before starting it so what happens here the powerful proud duke of ferrara the name is ferrara who has been widowed recently decides to marry the daughter of a count he shows the painting of his dead duchess to the broker who has come to him taking a proposal in fact his treatment of the painting reflects his in, uh, his treatment of women as objects to be owned his description of the painting as a piece and a wonder portray it as a work of art rather than a testament to the former love actually he was quite dissatisfied with the amiable behavior and jovial nature of his duchess her crimes appear not to be sexual or romantic infidelity as is assumed by othello for his wife desdemona you will be reminded here uh, rather her crimes are being glad so soon appreciative of others self confident and willing to stand up for herself these were her crimes according to the duke so uh, he expresses in the very painful tone how how uh, had he uh, uttered these lines uh, she had a heart how shall i say you will find uh, the painful tone in these lines when he used to say this she had a heart how shall i say to soon made glad to easily impressed she liked whatever she looked on and her looks went everywhere so as a punishment he gave commands that stopped her smiles and there she stands as if alive there she stands as if alive through this line can you imagine what were those commands although the poet has left the meaning unrevealed yet everybody can anticipate that the duchess was murdered and you can note here one thing more that the intention of the duke's speech is just to warn the messenger that his future wife must have a sense of decorum and dignity otherwise she would meet the same consequences as the last duchess suffered some critics believe that duke is a madman like browning's all other characters like porphyria's lover who has strangled his beloved in a stormy night but simultaneously critics believe 
that there is a method in madness. We may find an amalgamation of a Hamlet and an Othello in the character of the Duke. His instability of mind resembles that of Hamlet who utters to be or not to be. That's the question. But when we see the Duke jealous in love, we are reminded of Othello whose extremity of love for Desdemona changes into jealousy and he declares, I'll kill thee and love thee after. Consequently, candid Desdemona and innocent Duchess become the victims of whimsical apex of love. The Duke loves his Duchess. Who can doubt that? Nobody can doubt that. But his love is not on an equal plane. Jealousy and monopoly become the dominant aspects of his love for his wife. He utters, she thanked men, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how, as if she ranked my gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift. Here you will find that he objects the generosity and humanitarian qualities of Duchess character and complains that she values his pedigree and reputed social position as equally important to anybody else gifts to her. It is quite conspicuous here that he is proud of his virility or manliness and represents the age-old custom of regarding women as a piece of property. It is against his manhood that he should say to her what he liked and what he hated. It is a typical man who murmurs, And I choose never to stoop. Oh, sir, she smiled. No doubt, whenever I passed her. But who passed without much the same smile? This grew, I gave commands. Then all smiles stopped together. The whole tragic concept lies in these five words, then all smiles stopped together. Now her lifelike image or the painting can be seen only on the wall. Here we find some special paradoxes in his character. What are those paradoxes? His personality seems the mode of antithesis that grow out of his speech and behavior. Have you noted? On the one hand, he loves his Duchess cordially with his whole heart. But on the other, he cannot tolerate her liberal and generous attitude. Ironies of his character are so subtle as we find in Shakespeare. It is also strange to note that the Duke shows his inability to express his feelings in words. He confesses that he is incapable to enrich his language. But he speaks eloquently before the broker. Again he shows his interest in and indifference to the question of dowry simultaneously. See carefully in these lines. I repeat the count your master's known munificence is ample warrant that no just pretence of mine for dowry will be disallowed. Though his fair daughter's self, as I avowed at its starting, is my object. <clears throat> Thus the persona of Duke emerges as hard-hearted, proud, dictatorial, greedy and very cunning personality. At last, while descending the stairs, he draws the attention of the messenger to a bronze statue of Neptune. Neptune is a sea god. He emphasizes its unique value and endeavors to impress him with his artistic taste. You can find here Browning's particular passion for psychoanalysis of his protagonists. His, the character of the Duke can be compared with any character from a stream of consciousness. In this field, Browning proves to be a pioneer. I hope you have enjoyed it. We will discuss some other important topics in next lecture. Till then take care. Thanks.